In my last video, I showed you how I converted up an Emperor's Children kill team, and while I'm really happy with how they turned out, I felt like they were missing a leader, you know, a Chaos Lord or Head Honcho. So I decided to convert my own, using the Forge World Saul Travitz model as a base. I started off with a Volkite Charger from the newer 30k Special Weapons Kit, and cut off the left hand as well as the tip of the gun. I then took a Angel's Tear Helmet from the Forge World Kit, and cut away the vast majority of the head, to use as the business end of this gun. One of the key design features of 40k Sonic Weapons is their, um, barrels are all formed into the shape of screaming faces, and I felt that the elongated shape of this helmet, along with the screaming mouth, would help to clearly identify this pistol as a Sonic weapon. It was a little tricky here to get the faceplate shaved down so that it fit flush against the charger, but as always, some patience here paid off and after a couple of rounds of careful cutting and dry fitting, I was able to get the face to fit flush. Next up, add a bit of piping to the weapon, and gently bending some craft wire into the shape and gluing it on. I picked this stuff up at my local craft store, but paper clips will work as well. While I was pretty happy with the direction that this weapon was going, it still read a bit too much like a Volkite charger for my taste, as well as being just a tad bit too large to be a pistol. So I shortened it by cutting out this section with the power cell completely, and re-gluing the two remaining parts together. If I were to do this conversion again though, I probably would have done this step prior to the rest of the conversion, as it was a little bit difficult not snapping off the piping I just did. I then used a spare Mark IV arm I had laying around my bits box, and attached this to the torso and then the gun to it. To finish off the pistol, I added a little bit of green stuff around both the head of the gun as well as the tubing to blend them in together. Moving on to the close combat arm, I wanted to use the sword from the Noise Marine upgrade set. As I love the detailing on the weapon, and the leather glove with the various IV ports plugged into it is just a really nice touch. The shoulder pad though is a bit much for me, as his stretched face just seems more cartoonish and goofy than the look I am going for. So of course I busted out my trusty clippers and got to work hacking it away. This might be pretty obvious, but I really like working with Space Marines as their massive shoulder pads can hide a lot of wonky conversions and cuts. I had to remove a pretty decent amount of resin here in order to get rid of the stretched face shoulder pad, but I didn't have to be super precise, as any mistakes or wonky cuts would be hidden by its replacement. I really just had to make sure I didn't damage the detailing on the elbow or the hand. With that done, I glued the sword arm onto the Lord's body, alongside the head from the same Noise Marine upgrade kit, and moved onto the backpack. Originally, I wasn't planning on using Saul's backpack, as I didn't want to use too many pieces from the same model. But the sculpted on boulder strap going across his chest would have been extremely challenging to remove or repurpose, and ultimately, I was too lazy to deal with it, so the backpack was in. I did, however, decide to change the vents to use the eagle heads on the backpack from the now out of production Space Marine Plastic Commander. I sawed these off using a jeweler's saw, clipped off the vents from Saul's backpack, and then reattached them both together using a pin vise and paper clip. I finished off the backpack by using some green stuff to hide some gaps where my cutting was a bit rough, and the model was pretty much done. Well, it would have been. Except that Games Workshop keeps on insisting on sculpting their characters as if they're in a Captain Morgan commercial. So I need something to place under this guy's right foot, and I really didn't want to use a generic tactical rock. This might be my OCD kicking in, but I really have an issue with basing elements that don't blend into the basing style I am going for. For the Emperor's Children Warband, for example, I am basing my guys on plastic dungeon stone bases from Galadoria Games, and I felt that a random chunk of rock that comes with the Lenny Travitz model would just look out of place. So instead, that would be pretty cool for my lord to have his foot hiked up on a ruined stone pillar, which I made by cutting a plastic decorative cake pillar to the correct height, and then blending it into the rest of the base with some epoxy sculpt. This was then finished up by building up a rubble pile using some extra epoxy sculpt plus an off-cut piece of the cake pillar and some cork. To add a little more rubble effects to this, I piled up some hobby sand first and gently dipped super glue over top of it to lock it in place before sprinkling a little bit of baking soda over the entire thing. Now, the keen eye among you might have noticed that while I was making this base, the model's pose changed somewhat. That's because I decided I didn't really like the shooting pose I had given him, 
and a relaxed, arrogant pose would be much more suitable for this model. This of course required me to rip off the right arm and change it up, as well as pop off the head and reposition it so it's looking left. I got pretty lucky here, and I didn't damage any of my pieces beyond repair, but this just goes to show the importance of trying out your model's pose before actually gluing them together. This is a lazy habit I've developed over years of hobbying, but I'm trying to break it as it runs the very real risk of damaging hard to find or expensive models and bits. So don't be like me, and use something like blue tack to test fit your model's poses before getting glue happy. The Lord was then finished off by adding on shoulder pads from the Forge Lord Cacophony and Pounding Blade Emperor's Children kits. I was also intending to show how I painted my Emperor's Children Lord as part of this video, as I've already managed to extend this third Legion Kill Team project into three videos, and a fourth just seems like a milking idea for all it's worth. But, quite frankly, I ran out of time, and this video is already two weeks late. And the model's only about halfway through being painted at this time on Saturday night when I'm recording this. So there will be one more video, but until then, I hope you've enjoyed these conversions, and they've inspired you to hack up your own ludicrously expensive pieces of resin. As always, thanks for watching, and hobby on.